This video is going to show you how to run a Pearson's correlation in JASP as well as how you can write your correlation up in APA format. The data we're looking at today involves three different forms of memory. We have 100 participants complete three different memory tasks, a working memory task, a semantic memory task and an episodic memory task and they all received a score on this task, higher scores being indicative of better performance on all of these tasks. So if we get a positive correlation, that's going to mean that as one of our memory types goes up, so does the other one. So to run a correlation in JASP, we actually look under regression. So though we're not actually doing a regression, but you can see it's got a little picture of what looks like a correlation matrix there and we go to correlation matrix this gives us our correlation window and you can see it gives us a matrix here that's completely empty by default it's going to do Pearson's anyway but you can see the other common options are your Spearman's non-parametric and your Kendall's non-parametric and there's other videos which will show you how to run those so we're going to stick with Pearson's today all you need to do is click across the variables you wish to correlate so let's just start with looking at the associations in working memory and semantic memory. This automatically populates your correlation matrix. So unlike um, programs like SPSS, we've got to click OK and it opens a new window. It just produces things as you go along. So we can see here we've got our Pearson's R value of 0.481 and it automatically gives you your P value as well and the P value is less than 0.001 and we can just write this up accordingly we can simply state there's a significant positive correlation between working memory and semantic mem memory we give our R statistic and we give our degrees of freedom which is N minus 1 we've got 100 participants 100 minus 1 is 99 and we report our p-value and it gives us our p-value here as less than 0.001 and the little advantage is it has over SPSS SPSS would actually give you this as just 0.000, and you have, you'd have to remember that it needs to be stated like this. JASP states it as less than 0.001, i.e. in APA format, by default. We can actually just add to this, as I say, as we go along. So if we add another variable into this, this expands our matrix. And now you can see we've got an additional correlation here, working memory correlated with episodic memory. and semantic memory correlated with episodic memory. For the association between working memory and episodic memory you can see we have a significant association between these two variables and we'd write this up accordingly there's a significant correlation between episodic memory and working memory and again we'd report our Pearson's R value of 0.22 and we'd report our exact p-value of 0.028 now if we look at the association between semantic memory and episodic memory, you can see this is not statistically significant. However, you just write it up in exactly the same way, except you just simply state there was no significant correlation between semantic memory and episodic memory. And again, you'd report your statistics, your R statistic of 0.13 and your p-value of 0.199. You can actually just report a correlation matrix if you want and there's actually a YouTube video on this channel that shows you how to make a nice neatly formatted correlation matrix table however a, another really great thing about JASP is actually it gives you really neatly formatted tables already unlike SPSS that has vertical lines and so on this is actually very nearly an APA formatted table some small edits you'd like to, you could do to that which I'll show you a bit later on. There are some other options that you've got here as well. So you've got report significance, we've got flag significant correlations and confidence intervals as well. So if you wanted to, you can click flag significant correlations and this gives you stars next to your regression coefficients and again, really usefully, it also gives you a footnote for your table to label that as well. If you remove that, now what this is is an a, is a pretty much APA formatted correlation matrix table. 
Regression coefficients simply denoted the level of statistical significance that they have. You could copy and paste this and put it into the into report. Now you, you'd probably want to do a few changes once you've done that. You'd want, probably want to do that to two decimal places. Give those statistics to two decimal places. And the other key thing that you would definitely want to do is you'd remove those underscores as well in the state working memory, semantic memory, episodic memory. The only reason these underscores exist is because I've imported an SPSS data file. SPSS does not like you having column titles with spaces in, so underscores can be used instead. Instead, But this is a really simple way of creating a table that you can actually put directly into a report. Obviously, just make sure your formatting is consistent and so on. The other thing that you could ask for as well is confidence intervals. So this is, gives you confidence intervals for your regression coefficients. 95% confidence intervals is default, but if you wished, you could change that to 99% confidence intervals. And there you go, it changes it for you. So I'll just change this back to 95. So as you can see, for example, the upper bound for your 95% confidence intervals for your regression coefficients is 0.62, and the lower bound is 0.3. 3, 1. Not very common actually to see confidence intervals reported with regressions, but as you can see, these things are given for you as well. So let's just go back to what we had before, so default. There's a few other things that you may wish to consider as well. You can see hypothesis just says correlated, so this is two tailed hypothesis by default. Now you can see we can actually have a correlated pos positively. Um, so this is a one-tailed hypothesis for a positive correlation or a one-tailed hypothesis for a negative correlation. So a couple of points to make about this. This is quite important to note. You'll see that your correlation here, you've got a hypothesis that there's a significant positive correlation between working memory and episodic memory. So when it's two-tailed, we get a p-value of 0 0.028. If it's one-tailed, that's half, 0 0.014. Now, what if we click negative. So let's look at semantic memory here. So as you can see, we've got highly significant positive correlation between these two variables. What if our hypothesis is one tail and they have a negative association? Well, if we click correlated negatively, we are rejecting our hypothesis. It's given us a p-value of one. Then we reject our hypothesis. Even though technically two-tailed, this is a statistically significant regression coefficient because we've said we predict a one-tailed negative association, then we reject our hypothesis and it gives us our p-value of 1 there. The final thing that we can also do as well, it can give us plots and it'll give us our correlation matrices, so it, it produces you basically a correlation matrix of the plots and you can see the strength of the associations there as well. We can ask for densities for the variables as well. So it gives us a histogram for our variables as well. And if you click statistics, you can see the thing it does as well for us. It produces our R statistic and confidence intervals for it as part of these correlation plots as well. So all in all, JASP is actually a really nice, simple, intuitive way of producing your correlation coefficients as well as producing plots